What up, Shay45? It's Tuesday. Shit, what day is it? Fucking Thursday. This is what we got for you. Here on Shay45. I was do white people Thursday. That's where I call. You call up and uh, I answer questions about shit. Oh shit, the audio's on? Let's not use that part. <laughs> Thanks. Or, I don't know, I guess you can. Um, I prefer if you didn't. I still gotta work with these motherfuckers. Um, yeah, all right, we got another Drake song, because that's all we play, and uh, that'll be awesome. I'm sure you guys want to hear that one again. What's up? My name is Jude Angelini. You might know me as Rude Jude on Shea45's All Out Show. All right, so what brings us here today? I wrote a book. Um, I dropped a book about six months ago, and based on the sales, I got picked up by Simon & Schuster. They took it down. And we're re-releasing it this week, and it's actually doing pretty good. So, I'm glad that you guys came to talk to me about it. Mm, well, I don't want to reveal too much in the book and stuff, but um, what gave you the, why'd you start, why'd you write this book? Man, I started writing the blog, and uh, it was mostly just talking about wild shit I was doing as it was happening. Um, a lot of fucking, like just banging a lot of chicks, doing a lot of drugs. I, I had a bit of a ketamine habit. Um, I really like Vicodin and hallucinogens. And uh, I would write about just like bagging chicks while I'm tripping on fucking synthetic drugs. And people seem to like that. Um, and I started writing about my family, uh, how I was growing up. And I got some negative feedback. They was like, ah, man, you a bitch, man. Quit talking about like that emotional shit. And I was like, fuck that. I'm going to write about whatever I want to. So I took down the whole blog and I started writing the book. And it turns out that some people want to hear about that family shit. Because a lot of people can relate to it. So you said drugs. Yeah. So you, was you addicted? Was was it just something in the past? I mean, I want to call it addicted, man. I don't even know about addiction, dog. I, and I, this is going to sound fucked up, but like I feel like addiction is for fucking... It's for people with no willpower. Um, granted, like, look, heroin and shit, yo, you get strung out on that shit. Motherfucking, uh, uh, what's that? Meth, you get strung out on that. There's some shit that's physically addictive. Um, but, nah, man, I just did it until I got tired of it. I wasn't ever addicted. Like, I quit ketamine. I quit ketamine, but then I picked up GHB. So it's like, you know... I'm not addicted. I just really like drugs. You just really like drugs? I just really fucking like drugs. And if I'm not doing drugs, I'm trying to fuck abroad. And if I'm not fucking a chick, I'm overeating. If I'm not overeating, I'm buying fucking vintage watches. And if I'm not buying vintage watches, I'm, a, I'm looking for rocking chairs or going antiquing. Like, it's always something that keeps me going. Uh, but drugs seems to be the easiest shit to do. You know what I mean? So that's why I like to do it. So you don't think women's the easiest shit to do? Here's the deal with what drugs don't fucking drugs will leave your apartment when you're done. You know what I mean? Drugs will fucking not blow up your phone, and you can't get ketamine pregnant, no matter how much you try. You can bust loads all all over the ketamine, and a, no child will come out of it. So that was the shit that. That's the thing with women. It's not like I'm trying to be like, and I'm not an asshole, man. I'm not fucking girls over. So there's a there's a certain I don't know. There's there's a certain amount of baggage that one collects when you sleep around. So how many girls would you say you had at one time? I don't know. Just two. Just two girls at once. Just two. Someone who loves women. Just two. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. you falling in love? No, I wasn't. No, I don't. It's I don't. I don't. Dog, I don't see how these motherfuckers do it with all these chicks at the same time. I like to be able to focus. Uh, it's like, um, I guess it's cool if you lay back and a bunch of chicks blow you. But then, like, what if one's really good at sucking dick and the other one's not, and you gotta wait for the girl that's really good at sucking dick to suck your dick again because there's three of them? Like, it just seems like a fucking hassle. It seems like a hassle. Um, I'd rather just. Uh, I rather personally for and I, and I was writing about this like for as far as running bustos like we used to call that shit bustos or group sex. I prefer just me and my homeboy tag teaming a chick. That's way I can just focus on the fucking girl. 
Like, I could just focus on the girl, zone out on her. I don't got to worry about if some chick getting jealous or some shit like that. Just toss her up. Um, I haven't done that in a while, though. Uh, it, it, that, that tends to end relationships. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, speaking of girls, I seen that there's a part in the book where you talk about strip clubs. You, I, I guess you were addicted to going to strip clubs then. See, man, I just really like strip clubs. I don't even want to use the word addicted. I just really liked them. I like them shits a lot. Uh, and I didn't even like paying them strippers either. I Strip clubs stopped making sense when I discovered hookers. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mm. see how these motherfuckers, you go to the club and then you make it rain and then a bitch might fuck you. But, like, you paid for that pussy, dog. Like, if you didn't throw all that money up in the air, that's not your mouthpiece getting that shit. That was you throwing money up in the air. Do that shit broke. See if you can pull that same broad. Then you might have some game. But you in there tricking on these fucking strippers and then got the nerve to talk shit about someone like myself who goes and gets a nice fucking prostitute. Well, fuck you. Like, we all paying for pussy one way or another. Mm. Now, in the book, there was something that was really funny because it reminded me of one of the guys who go on the road with us all the time. Yeah. He seems to like strange women or different types of women. Oh, yeah. You know? You saw And I see that you, I don't really want to give too much away, right. but I seen on one hot day you was waiting for a very sweaty young lady oh, who yeah. had one arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Flint. Getting, Flint has, there's certain clubs in Flint, Michigan, to this day, you can still get a $5 lap dance. Like, you can get a $5 lap dance. And if you really think about it, the economics of that, like, out here, like, in Manhattan, it's $20 a WAP. So, I'm just get, I'm getting four for the price of one, basically. Mm. But the chicks look like they're four for one bitches. You know what I mean? Like these chicks look rugged, like fucking gunshot wounds, tattoos <laughs> in the wrong places and shit. Fucking there was I swear to God there was even a fucking there was a chick in there with Down syndrome. Uh Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, book. yeah, bro. Like it was fucking nuts. And I saw this I saw a one arm stripper and I just wanted to get a dance off of her so that I could brag on it. You know what I mean? It's that bragging shit, like, oh I fucked that girl or I did this or I climbed that mountain. And like I was like, who can who else can brag like what what if I'm sitting around at a bar and all these motherfuckers talking about they did this with this stripper and did that with that stripper, I just wanted to shut down the conversation and be like, Yeah, I got a lap dance from a one arm stripper with dreadlocks. Say something. So I did it and uh it ended up being probably one of the most uncomfortable situations ever. You would think that like I thought her nub was going to be mushy, you know what I mean? Like, I thought it was going to be, like, mushy, but it was that shit was fucking hard as hell. And she was sweaty as shit, and she was just dragging it all over my body, man. And, uh, bro, like, that was one of them times where I'm like, dude, like, you got to stop doing shit just to be able to tell a story about it, because this is really fucked up, man. And uh, I was like, just... Just take it. Just take it to the end of the song because that shit's going to be like, it's going to make her feel fucked up if you shut down the lap dance. And I almost got there and I was just like, nah, I can't do this no more. And I swear to God, like two seconds later, the song ended. And she was looking at me all foul. And I, I never, I never, that actually might have been the last fucking lap dance I ever got, man. That, that shit might have <laughs> cured me right there. I was, I, I left, I left LLTs in Flint on Saginaw. I never came back to that shit again. I hollered at my people. I'm like, bro, I know I'm going to want to come back here. Don't let me come back here no more. And I never did, dog. I never did. Mm, scared you. Yeah, scared straight. <laughs> scared straight. Have you ever tried having sex with a girl with no legs? No, nah, dude, I've never even, man, I've never, I've never had sex with a girl with no legs. Or, um, I think I could, though. As long as they don't smell bad. I can do pretty much anything as long as they don't smell bad. And if they do smell bad, I came up with this way to do this shit. You just take some cologne or something. Like, I learned it from, like, reading a book about uh, the dead body people, the morticians. They would, they would put, like, fucking oil up in their nose and shit. So there's been a couple times where, like, a chick wasn't smelling all the way right, and I will just go throw some oil up in my nose and beat that pussy up. Beat it, beat it, beat it, sir. 
So did you get writer's block while, while doing this book? Um, no, I got writer's block now though. I didn't get writer's block while I was doing the book because half the shit, it was, all, it was all happening as I was doing it. Like the first story, like the first story I, that's in the book, I was high on PCP when I wrote that shit, man. Like I was still fucking high. I was going off of PCP writing that motherfucker. So like it was happening. I was living it. And if you read the book, that's how it feels. It feels like, yo, this motherfucker is doing it as mm -hmm. it's happening. And the cool thing about this book that a lot of cats that's that's really not happening in a lot of these books is getting it's being published published by a major publisher and it's not a celebrity book. It's not like a fucking I'm not I'm not famous, you know what I mean? I'm just me. And there's not a lot of cats coming from my socioeconomic group that that's making books like this. I'm not college educated. I, it took me a long time to graduate high school. I was in fucking I was in English class with people with helmets and shit. You know what I mean? I come from a broke ass. We fucking we we would be considered white trash. And they just they're just not dropping books like that. They just aren't. You know they might write about you know you might be have some motherfucker that like came from like the hood and went to Yale but bro I didn't go to Yale you know I didn't figure that shit out I didn't get to Yale this is not like a fucking feel good story this is a story of like just the fucking one of one of us one of y'all just trying to get it trying to figure shit out mm. best chapter you think that's in the book Jesus Christ that's a good one man um <sighs> Best chapter in that book, man. I really like, uh, I really like, I like Gingerbread Man, which is about just ODing, uh, going nuts. Uh, I really like, I like Top Gun. The book I put together like an album. Like, I was listening to uh, a lot of classic rock, Fleetwood Mac. Um, Abbey Road by the Beatles and Scarface the Diary and I wanted I wanted because each it's not even chapters really it's like short stories so I wanted each story to flow into the next one and and just kind of be able to hold together really nice as a book and I got a lot of inspiration off of that Scarface the Diary just the way you know it starts off with the piano and then it goes into like Jesse James and shit uh was it Jesse James first? I don't remember. I was high listening to that shit. But, like, yeah. So, it's almost like, what's your favorite child? I can tell you something that I don't like as much. You know, there's a couple. I'm like, fuck. I, like, there's one called Eating Out that everybody likes. But I'm just like, man, I'm over that fucking story, dog. <laughs> See, Eating Out. Yeah, it's Eating Out. It's, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a wild one. That, that one is a fucking wild one. Some people like them wild ass stories. And look, man, I'm not lying on my dick. Like it's everything in there happened. I don't lie on my penis. Like it's fuck that shit. There's no lies in that motherfucking book. That's why some of the stories don't end that sweet because that's how it ended. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, like all right, then he went and took a shit. Like that's how it fucking ended. That's how it. That's that's the end of that story, man.